everybody. Just a quick one today about face mats. Straightforward, you would think. Hmm. Some people don't, or uh, some people ask me how you turn the sides. And so I thought I'd make a, a quick little, really quick tutorial about that. Because um, the turning in for the sides is also useful if you do fariki or wall hangings or large mats or tufara or yeah, oh, there's, a num there's a number of uses for being able to know how to you know turn the sides and so this today is just a, a, a simple you know tiny little placemat um, takitahi all the way it's slightly different for takirua and um, and it's it's pretty straightforward it's just a simple lock off on both sides I use my oh, for these little ones I use my shorter fenu for that and um, sometimes I put color in, sometimes I make them a bit bigger, uh, bigger but um, in general, it's a, uh, you know, this is, this is four, 40, this is 40 fenu in total, so 20 each way, so it's a, it's a decent size, but if you want them bigger, you obviously have to increase the numbers or, or the width of your fenu, or, or if you want to make them really fancy, you, you half the width, and, and you know, there's, there's hundreds of of uses for these sort of things and you can vary them in, in all sorts of different ways you can lock them off differently you can make a fitty on either side or whatever you like I just um I, the main purpose of today's um, video is the turning really uh, not the actual product itself so just bear with me so in we go welcome back everybody it is not compulsory to have a weaving or helper or quality control officer on your weaving table, but it um, helps with the humor side of things. So we're making a placemat or a mini placemat. I've only got 40 fenu, um, 20 for each direction. Uh, they've been pre-prepared, dried, re-moistened to make them a little bit more pliable. Uh, these are from a a bush that I haven't woven with before so they're a bit of an enigma to me and they they prep pretty rough so you know for demonstration purposes that will work it won't be the best ever work that I've made so in order to make a placemat we first need to just like a kit of Hokkaido we lay our whakapapa which in this case is just takitahi so over one under one pretty straightforward uh, remember, we need to leave some space at the bottom to lock off. So you just add them in as you go, as per, yeah, well, Kitafakaro, or, or quite a lot of other um, Fadaki starts like that as well. Um, I do it this way, other people lay it differently. Um, I usually lay them dull side down and shiny side up. I find it easier. But it's, um, it's really up to the individual, you know, how you want to do it. Um, I also put a sheet down, as you can see. I've explained that before, but um, some of you may not have seen the video where I explained that. So it, it helps with them not slipping on a, on a different surface. And also some weavers don't have the luxury of having a specific weaving area or weaving table and they have to weave on the dining table and we keep food kai separate from weaving and in order to help facilitate that um, a sheet kind of helps to keep the surfaces separate well that's what I was told that's why some some weavers do it that way of course, you can always weave on the floor if you're agile enough. And um, 
if you want. So I'll continue with this until I've used them all up. So here we are, 20 each way. Now I know there is all sorts of different ways of how people secure these. I use bobby pins. And I just put them in, and really only at the end. Um, got the tension usually right, so I don't need to have them earlier. And it saves an extra step too. So I just pop them in at some crucial intervals to stop these from moving around because as you all know we may lay them shiny side up but we lock off on the dull side which is obviously at the moment on the other side so in order to lock these off you need to turn it here we go now locking off i know i've been Well, because my videos are meant for people who have woven before and had some form of tutorial. Um, I am assuming that people know how to lock off. If that is not the case, then um, I apologize for it. But essentially, what it, um, I, because there's so many different ways of locking off. And so I'm showing one way and then the next person says, oh yeah, but I've been shown this way. And the next one says, oh yeah, but I, I like this way better. So that's why, I, generally speaking, don't show the lock off. So um, I just go briefly into it, really, really briefly. So in order to lock off the simple, what I've been told is called a double lock off. There are um, other names for it, but I, they depend on the region and on the tutor. And so I just, you know, stick to that one. It's the easier way. So at the moment we have them all in one line. Um, we want to lock off with two up, two down and one across. So therefore we need to build up to um, be able to do that. So I just basically building up to that. So right now I've got, you can see that probably not in the video from that angle. Um, you've got two up, two down. I might just get the angle of the video changed for you. So hopefully you can see this. So now we have two up there. Yeah. You see that? Two up and two down. Right? And then we take this one across. So essentially we're working with five. So this one goes across, that one comes down and on whatever angle that is, I don't even know. And that one comes up. This one is a bit long so I've laid them a little bit long so I'll just pull it a little bit so not to waste anything. Put that one down. one comes and locks that one in, that one locks both, and that's the new one to give us two up, two down. Next one goes across, this one goes in, right, this one goes up, down on itself, this one goes down, up, down, there we go, so that's the other side. So, two up, two down, one goes across, pull it a little bit, just so we don't waste anything with the length. This one comes across, one goes up, on, in on itself, goes down, up, down, two up, two down. Next one comes across, and so on and so forth. So now you reach the end, right? Here we go. And obviously if you want to, you know, 
go up on the sides, you still got to get rid of these side ones. So you try and sort of fold them in as far as you can. Right? This is going to need a little bit of length. And then the idea is to tuck them in. So you basically I have to use this and loosen this up a little bit. So tuck them in on itself. You remember this is the back of the whole whole item. Uh, way more elegant ways depending on the type of lock off you're using and you can make it tidy and all that but for this kind of demonstration of really just the turning of the sides rather than the actual product right and these ones basically pretend that they normal fender and just tuck them in work out where they would go normally They've been all tucked in. Now you can tidy them up by pulling a little bit to make it nice and straight. If it's already nice and straight, just leave it. And then what you do is you turn it back over. Right, so now we want to achieve. A kind of rectangular shape and in order to do that we need to turn the sides so this is going to be the whole project is going to be takitahi over one under one uh, it's slightly different if you're working with um, either takirua that's over two under two or any um, more complicated patterns because you need to work out a way of securing the sides when you turn them in. So in this instance, all we do is just kind of turn them over and weave them in. It's pretty really straightforward. There's nothing really special about it. Turn it in. There you go. and try and keep it as neat and tidy as possible. That's really all it is. And then you just continue leaving a couple of rows each time. I usually do two or three at any given time. Now, when you have reached the end, you do the same as on the other side. You just turn them in, just like so. And then 
and start again on the other side it's kind of hard to see try and do it like this So I've finished this one and now we're going to lock it off and obviously we're locking off on the dull side again just like at the beginning. So we turn it around and same as before we just need to build up to it. To make it two up two down. your two up two down one across and then we just um lock it off I'll show it from a different side again so again from the other side so just building up to it Now we've got two up, two down, one across, and just do our normal double lock. And again, as mentioned, all my videos are meant for experienced weavers only, so um, any type of lock off you should have um, hopefully already learned either from a class or a, a, a friend nana a book online you know whichever way you you prefer to learn so this is just one of the many different ways of locking off your work it all depends on what type of weaving you're doing what type of material because you can make this with um, any sorts of material, um, cardboard, plastic, bark. A lot of um, people use bark for their for their weaving in, in other parts of the world and uh, it's, it's very nice material to work with. And obviously because it might not be as pliable as our New Zealand flax that we use, or harakiki, you may have to change how you do the ends. So don't take this as the only way that can this be done. By no means would I ever say there's only one way 
the one way only to do things. There's many ways to go about, you know, depending on, you know, your materials, your skill. So when we reach the end here, same as before, we go as far as we can. And then the last slot, we just tuck in. Yes, there are more elegant ways of going about it. And if I would make one of these as a commission, I would most definitely be way more careful than what I am in this um, video. Um, I probably would use thinner fenu as well, probably half the width of this, and put a pattern in, some color depending what the customer wants. But essentially, this video was really only for the purpose of demonstrating how to turn the sides in. Right, here we go. And now just tuck it in like before. There's really nothing special about it. It's just be imaginative. Find your own way. You don't have to do it the way I do it. I'm just giving you a couple of ideas. And if they work for you or not, I can't tell. But there is nothing wrong with doing it another way if it works for you. Never stop trying. Never stop exploring. Have a tutu. Have a play. Right, so the last thing we need to do is tidy this a little bit up, cut the ends, and that's really it. So there we go. Sides turned in, top and bottom locked off, decent size. Not the most perfect thing I've ever done, but for the sake of demonstration, it will do. So let your imagination run free, see what you can do with other materials. Um, as I said before, this one, this turning in, there's another way of doing it um, if you just, you know, want to turn it. But if you want to have the shiny side all on one side, that's the, probably the easiest way of doing it. Um, it's useful for all sorts of other things, not just for little placemats, fader key. Uh, two for wall hangings, you name it. Uh, um, yeah, it's it's a little useful thing to know, and and I've been asked ugh, for a couple of years now to to show how this is done. So I hope it's been a little bit of a help. Happy weaving, everybody.